What's up, P Nation? Today we're gonna show you how inexpensive San Francisco is. So we're budget travelers. We're literally always on a budget wherever we go. We have a whole slew of videos explaining how expensive different cities around the world are. Today we're gonna break down San Francisco. So we always do one day's worth of expenses for two people, and today we're trying to do under $150. Let's see if we can do this. So people know that San Francisco is one of the most expensive cities to live in in the United States, but does that mean it's one of the most expensive to visit? Not necessarily. It's actually one of the cheaper places to visit if you do your homework, which is what we're gonna show you in this video. Transportation is not that expensive, accommodation is not that expensive, and most of the stuff you can do in the city is actually free. So now onto accommodation. As a first world destination, kind of like Sydney when we were doing the How Expensive is Sydney video, you can expect to pay more in San Francisco, but our trick to staying here has been Airbnb specifically renting a single room in a shared complex. So it's one room with a shared kitchen, a shared bathroom, kind of like you're living in an apartment with roommates. Now, since we've been here, we've actually had no roommates. So it's been actually really wonderful. and We've had a place all to ourselves. The prices of hotels vary depending on where you're staying in the city. They're probably your most expensive option. So hotels for us is out. But if you're like on an extreme budget, it is legal to sleep in your car. So around the city, we've seen so many different vans, RVs, huge buses that have been converted into living spaces, and they're just parked all around because that's something you can do. As long as they move these vehicles for street cleanings, the city's happy to have them there. So it's kind of odd. Like you can just rent a car, you can stay in your car. If you have an RV or you have a van that's converted and you can stay in it, you can do that. This is all helped by the fact that there is a lot of free parking around the city. If you're not like specifically downtown where like where the big skyscrapers are and you're kind of in the city next to Golden Gate Park, there's tons of free parking. You can stay in a hostel for about $38 a night per person. Now and that price may vary depending on like availability and the seasons and stuff like that. But I think honestly your best bet, especially if you're traveling with someone else or you have multiple people, Staying in an Airbnb that has like a shared kitchen unit, shared bathroom area is the cheapest way to go. All right, now on to transportation. So there are three different types of transportation when you're in San Francisco. There is the public transport, there is Uber and Lyft, and then you can rent your own car like we already said. Public transportation around the city is super easy to navigate. As you can see behind me, these buses are called Muni. They're part of the Muni line and they're only $3 to ride. In addition to this, there's BART, which connects the entire Bay Area and it's also super inexpensive. Not as inexpensive as New York City because it's not just a flat rate. The rate is depending on how far you go. Like if you go, if you go from San Francisco to Oakland, it's only $5. But if you go from San Francisco to the airport, it's $5 plus a $5 airport fee. You get a discount if you buy a Clipper card and that's eligible for buses, the BART, the light rail, and even the ferry system, which we haven't even talked about yet. The ferry system is the best way to see the bay. You get on a ferry, it's varying prices if you go to Sausalito or Oakland, or there's like, I think eight different stops from the ferry terminal in San Francisco, and you just go out on the bay and you will have an amazing day. Like honestly, it's the best money on public transportation you're gonna spend while you're here. So public transportation in the city is great and inexpensive, unless you're coming from the airport. But, and then there's the option of taking Uber or Lyft, and if you do a shared ride, like this is crazy. Sometimes it can actually be cheaper than BART or the Muni to get across the city because of what the demand is and just the algorithm. And then there's the option of a rental car, which is probably the most expensive option unless you have a large group of people. Parking in San Francisco isn't necessarily that crazy. Here in the city, especially if you do the Airbnb thing that we talked about earlier, it is not gonna be hard to find parking on the street next to your Airbnb. Honestly, unless you're in the financial district in the center, which I don't think there are any Airbnbs there that are gonna be inexpensive, you're not gonna find parking there. But if you're anywhere else in the city, you can find parking on the street literally everywhere. It's a lot easier to rent a car here than we thought it was. And if you're already gonna rent a car for Napa or Sausalito or going up to the Muir Woods, like you could just rent a car for the time you're in San Francisco and it would actually be cheaper than taking public transportation everywhere. Or if you're out for an adventure, you can rent one of these bad boys and ride across the city. They come with two helmets and all you have to do is scan the QR code on the bike to get started. So now we're at Devil's Teeth Baking Company here at Sunset trying to get a biscuit sandwich. Oh, ho, ho. Now we're gonna walk to the beach and talk about food. Man, we chose the mistiest day to be making this video. 
There's like a steady stream of mist coming off of the water right now. It's making everything very spooky. Just look at the beach today. Oh my gosh, it's so foggy. I don't even know what's happening right now. It must be June gloom. So the lowdown on food in San Francisco is this. If you intend to eat out for every single meal while you're visiting, you'll probably spend a lot of money. Especially if you're sitting down to eat, you can expect to spend like at least 10 to $20 per person. And that's just how it is here in San Francisco. Things are more expensive. That's just like what the restaurant culture has become. So we've done a lot of eating out while we've been here and we found that like getting takeout from places is really the cheaper way to go. You can get a huge super burrito from the Mission District for like $12, that's easily two meals. You can get a burger from In-N-Out that's $4. You can get takeout Thai food for 11. You can do a picnic in the park with some San Francisco sourdough for less than $10 for two people. And if you're trying to go to some really touristy spots, you can get a chowder bread bowl at Boudin for like 12. And you can even spend $14 on a Sunday at Ciardelli Square. Like you have all of the options, cheap and not so cheap. But of course our favorite thing, and like it's always been our go-to, is that we get grocery items and we go sit out in a picnic in one of San Francisco's beautiful numerous parks and you enjoy the scenery and the city and you just enjoy being outside while picnicking. Now we've treated ourselves here today. We have a ridiculous breakfast sandwich, it cost $8, coffee that costs $3.50, which is probably one of the cheaper coffees I've ever seen in the city, and a slice of chocolate cake that cost $4. So, I mean, there's no way around really like eating out and not spending a lot of money. I just think you can be like, really conscious of your spending. And if you utilize the grocery store, obviously you can make that cost go down. Let's try the sandwich. Copy. All right, let's try this beautiful sandwich. So it's a huge biscuit, scrambled eggs, bacon, garlic aioli, pepper jack cheese, and avocado. Whoa. Oh my God. This might be the most delicious biscuit breakfast sandwich I think I've ever eaten in my entire life. <gasps> what about the South? This might be better than Bojangles. Wow. So when you are picnicking, obviously be mindful of the birds. Yeah. Because they will steal your stuff. Like and he the was dogs. obviously going after the cake because he really wanted the cake. Wants oh, and the dogs. Yes, we did have a dog yeah. steal our donut. That was four dollars because that's how much donuts are here, unfortunately. But it was a memory that we laugh about now, so like it was totally worth it. But it was very tragic at the time. Yes. <laughs> As always, we're gonna show you some grocery store items to show you Bay Area prices. Milk is always way expensive. Even the cheapest butter is still kind of expensive. Cashews is $10. Fruit will cost you $5. Blueberries are $7. Apples are okay. Bell peppers are way too much. Oreos are $6. Pretzels are like almost $4. Doritos are $4.50, like what? Bread is like the only reasonably priced thing here, but you need to be getting bread from a sourdough factory here in San Francisco because the sourdough is so good. English muffins are $4.49. Shampoo is $5. Or $6. This can be from $3 to $6. While the grocery stores are more expensive here in San Francisco, especially in the Bay Area, they will save you money in the long run. We've actually been able to like find very discounted grocery stores around the city, especially if you go to like Chinese grocery stores, you can save a lot of money there on produce. So it's just like little ways you can save money if you're staying a long time like we are. All right, and now we are at the park. We are looking for, believe it or not, some buffalo in the city of San Francisco. <laughs> so we are at Golden Gate Park, which is a giant park in the middle of the city. So let's go see if we can find some buffalo. Golden Gate Park is one of the largest parks in the United States, at least in a city setting. And there are, easily there are 20 different things you could see. Uh -huh. And it's so, <gasps> and the park is so big that you could easily spend an entire day just walking around, seeing all the little attractions and the buildings and the windmills, it has everything. What is this? Let's go see. I don't know, we gotta investigate. What? This park is full of surprises. Is that the buffalo pin? We might have found them. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Oh, is this the pool? Yeah. Cool, what is this? You're never gonna believe me if I tell you. Okay, I wanna guess. So like, it's obviously not like a, like, the water's really clear. This is not for ducks. Any guesses? No, what is it? It is for casting. These rings are where you cast out your line and it's how to practice fly what? fishing. This tank was built for fly fishing practice. That is so random. 
Oh. I know, it's San Francisco. They think of everything. <sighs> Couldn't find the buffalo. I don't know. This park is amazing. I think we got a little lost. <laughs> Philly is so big. It's ridiculously big. <laughs> what is this? We gotta, I don't know, we're walking on the trail. Is this the archery? <gasps> is this the archery? I don't know, I'm seeing brown mounds in the distance. <gasps> tricking me like we weren't gonna be able to find them and that was the pen we found them there really are buffalo here <laughs> why are there buffalo here uh, we gotta go investigate oh <laughs> bison in the city can't find a better free attraction in all of San Francisco. Alright, now we made it to our favorite park, Land's End. As you can see behind me, the mountains or the hills back there look amazing. And there is the Golden Gate Bridge. It's stunning. Now onto attractions. There are so many free things to do in the city. So you can walk the Golden Gate Bridge for free, or if you want to pay to bike it, you could rent a bike at a shop and then ride across it all the way to Sausalito and then drop your bike off in that little Italian village and they will come pick you up with your bike and take you back into the city. That is an option you can do, but you can just walk it for free. It's Leah's least favorite attraction, but I love walking the bridge because it's just it's like you get this great view of the city and you're way up high in the air and it just like feels exhilarating. But the real jewel of San Francisco is the neighborhoods. Undoubtedly the neighborhoods are the coolest part of the city. You have the Mission, you have Haight-Ashbury, you have Chinatown. They're all so different from each other. There's like 37 different neighborhoods and they all have their own unique little downtown. And it like truly feels like you're in a European city or some other city that is not American. Cause so many people from around the world have settled here in San Francisco and just like the food and the architecture and the churches, like everything is so different from what you're used to in America. So exploring the neighborhoods is free and it's one of our favorite things to do. And then of course, you have to do all the touristy stuff on North Beach, Pier 39, you can't miss that. There's just like so much people watching to do. It's like a little bit amusement park on the pier. And then right next to that, you can actually see seals off of the pier. They come in the harbor and it's like one of my favorite places to see seals. Next to that, there is Boudin Bakery, which is the best place to get sourdough because you're truly immersed in like this bakery with bread flying above you and just like, it's full of activity. Um, other things to do for free, go to the beach and explore the parks. There are so many parks. The Palace of Fine Arts is beautiful, as is the Painted Ladies Park, which is called Lafayette Park. Parks are one of our favorite things to do, as you guys have already seen, because you can sit down and have a picnic and look at the city, look at the buffalo, and then there are a plethora of parks that are on the hill and you can watch the sunset go down over the city as you're having charcuterie or whatever picnic you wanna have. That's one of our favorite things to do. You just put out a blanket and Mission Dolores Park or Lafayette Park in front of the Painted Ladies and just watch the city light up at night. And if you're willing to spend some money, I recommend going to Girardelli Square and getting the $15 Sunday because it is unbelievable. You truly feel like you're in Disney World. It's just like an otherworldly experience right next to the water. There are dinner cruises you can take that go under the Golden Gate Bridge and you can get a ticket from the National Park Service to go to Alcatraz, which is an awesome day trip full of like creepy old stuff. And you're just like in an old prison, but there are a lot of movies filmed there. So there's lots of history to check out, but it's not free with your park pass. And the last free thing that I can put in this video or else, I, I mean, I could really talk about this for hours, but the thing that I think you should do is go to the San Francisco Giants game for free. You can enter in the back alley. It's like not actually that sketchy. There's a metal detector check and everything, but it was something the city put in when they first built AT&T Park, which is now Oracle Park. And you can like enter this little, I don't even know what to call it, like a dugout in the back next to the outfield. And you're actually closer to the players than you would be if you paid for a ticket. So if the San Francisco Giants are in town, you should definitely go to a baseball game. And that is it for attractions because we would be here all day if I talked about the city because I love it here so much. Because we were able to save on accommodation with Airbnb, we can use the remainder of our budget primarily on food because getting ourselves around the city with public transportation is so inexpensive. After one day in the city and a few nice meals, our day came to $147.50. All right, and that is it. This place is beautiful. You need to come here like 
today. We hope we've convinced you that it is possible to do San Francisco on a budget. We've been doing it for a while now and it really is possible. You guys, we have company. Oh my gosh, and they can jump rope. Also, there are like a weird amount of ravens in this city. I don't know if that's like, from me coming from the East Coast, I have never seen so many ravens in my entire life. As soon as you look back, he stops. Wait, ready? ready? No. Not looking. Ready? I'll tell you when he's walking. Okay. Right. I'll do this when he's walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Am I from the East Coast or what? Yeah. <laughs>